everyone, welcome to the Oaklords YouTube channel. In today's tutorial, we are finally making a messenger bag. We've been talking about it for years and today we're doing it. Today we're gonna make the Uni messenger bag and this pattern comes from I Think So. So I'll be honest, my friends and I over on the Oak Roots Patreon side of things, we've been talking about messenger bags for a while and I, and I, I know some of you guys have been getting frustrated with me about it because I've been promising it. But I wanted to find the right pattern I think I found a really, really good one. Now, you can see the size of this is a smaller size messenger bag. Will this hold the huge engineering gamer laptop? Probably not. We'll get there. But this is a good messenger bag for us to start with on the channel. This will definitely hold your smaller laptops, your iPads, all that stuff, your notebooks. This pattern is so cute. I tweaked it just a little bit, just a little bit, because that's what I do. First of all, we have this nice big flap here, so you can have a lot of fun with this. You want to put an embroidery design on it? Do it. You got a Cricut, you want to do some heat transfer vinyl, someone's name, a funny saying? Yes. You have a panel? Flowers or something? Yes. Great, great flap. The pattern does suggest you use Velcro for the closure. I don't have Velcro, and I'm not the biggest fan of Velcro because I have a lot of animals in my house. Animals means we have animal fur. Velcro doesn't always go together very well. So I actually use these little magnetic snap rivets for that. I use two of them and I do rivet it through the exterior and the lining. You see that here, these little dots here. When you lift it up, we've got these two adorable like 3D sticking out pockets. Now I believe these are like pleated pockets. They call it in the pattern an accordion pocket. It is optional. Almost everything today is optional. Let me just mention that real quick. So these accordion pockets, completely optional. On the back, we have this really nice, just easy peasy slip pocket. If you wanna put that slip pocket on the front, you can definitely do that. Also, these magnetic snaps or Velcro, that closure option, also optional. You don't have to have any sort of closure here. You can just let the flap hang without having it have to close anywhere. If you wanna use buckles, you can definitely add some buckles here. Feel, I mean, just get creative with this. Don't make this messenger bag super hard. Whatever you're kind of like, I don't feel comfortable with that, leave it off. You can make this a very easy bag. So we have that, you can see we have this adorable little handle on the top. Like I said, on the back, we have this nice big slip pocket. When we open up the bag, you guys are gonna like this. This is also optional. We have a zipper on the top. We have a nice little flat zipper up here. It is optional. You don't have to add the zipper if you don't want to. I have lots of store-bought messenger bags that do not have a zip closure, but I know a lot of you guys Love a zip closure on every bag. There you go. Inside, we have a zipper pocket. Now this zipper pocket is optional following the pattern, but in today's tutorial, we're gonna turn the whole bag out through that zipper pocket. So for me today, that is not optional. But if you wanna follow the pattern, you don't have to add the zipper pocket. The pattern actually has like an elastic bunched up pocket for the lining. I don't work with elastic very much, so I opted for just a mesh pocket here, which I think is great. I'm gonna be doing the same type of pocket in today's tutorial. So as you can see, we got a lot going on with this bag. We have a lot of pockets. We love a lot of pockets. So if you wanna do all of them, do all of them. You're not gonna regret it. If you're like, I'm really not in the mood to try this or that, then don't, just skip it, do what you need. Let me go grab a couple items so we can see what will fit in this bag. All right, so here's the bag. Let's open it up. First, I have like an iPad Pro that fits in there perfectly. Next, composition notebook also fits in there perfectly. Now let's see, this is the big one. This is like a standard school folder. Oh yeah, fits in there perfectly. So that should also mean that if you have like a spiral notebook, a small maybe one inch binder, that should also fit in the bag just fine. So, mm, look how stinking cute that is. All right, let's close it up. See how it looks. Oh yeah. I love that bag. All right, let me go get my step stool so you can see what it looks like on. Okay, so I am five feet, four inches. A set, anywhere between a size small and a size medium, depending on the day. Let's see, oh, I should probably raise it up so you can see it better, huh? So it does have an adjustable strap. Look at that. That's cute, right? That is a cute, cute bag. This is, oh, college Jessica would be all over this. I always wear messenger bags at college. I love this bag. So I will be walking you through the pattern entirely today. I'll have a couple tweaks. Another tweak you can see over here is instead of a removable 
D-ring crossbody strap. I am using a crossbody strap that is adjustable but not removable. Any tweak I give, for example, like I'm gonna be using these magnetic snaps again, I will provide you with instructions on where to place them if you're using the rivet magnetic snaps or if you're using the magnetic snaps with the prongs. I will give you advice on where to place them, where I measure it out from where to help you out with that. Thank you as always to I Think So for allowing me to use your patterns in my tutorials. You guys, if you haven't checked out I Think So, they have all of the patterns. I mean, literally, you wanna make slippers? They got patterns for slippers. They have patterns for everything, anything you can think of. So just go check out their website, put in whatever you can think of, and there will be tons of patterns. I mean, messenger bags, there are so many messenger bag patterns. So if there's anything else you wanna see over there, make sure to leave it down in the comment section down below. If you're new to the Oak Alerts YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, anything at all, suggestions, tips, tricks, all that leave it down in the comment section down below. I will have timestamps for every single step of this tutorial. There are a lot of pieces to this bag. So again, if there's only like one thing, you're like, I don't need to know how to do that pocket, just skip. Timestamps for everything will be listed in the description. If you just click over here, it's like a little arrow, it'll expand that description and you'll also find links to all the products. Also, if you just hover over the bottom of the video, you'll be able to pull up all the timestamps right there. All right guys, let's get started. So from this, you're gonna need about a yard of exterior fabric. I'm gonna be combining my materials for that. I'm gonna use this fun vinyl for the flap and I'm gonna use wax canvas for the body. I love using wax canvas on bags, especially that have kind of tighter curves because I feel like I can get away with a lot of mistakes uh, and you're not gonna see it. For the flap, I wanted to use something a little bit more sturdy. I used quilt cotton on the first bag and that was great, but I did add quite a bit of interfacing to it to make sure it kind of beefed up. The pattern actually suggests you use cotton canvas for all this, so that's also great. It just depends how firm or, or mushy you want your bag to be. If you want your bag to have more of like a natural, kind of like easy, lightweight feel, then just use some really cool canvas. I mean, you could honestly even use like the uh, painter's cloth, things like that. Like if you wanna go for a really cool kind of rucksack look, um, but you know me, <laughs> I'm gonna be a little bit extra. You could definitely use a thicker vinyl for the body of the bag if you're using an industrial sewing machine. I just feel like there are a lot of layers in this bag, so I would I would think about that if you're not used to sewing really thick seams. For the lining of the bag, I'm using my go-to waterproof canvas. You're gonna need at least a yard of that. I love this specific waterproof canvas because it is more lightweight. This is a water resistant canvas. Uh, this is from Wonderground Fabrics. It is a little bit thinner. Again, we're gonna have a lot of layers. So I wanna make sure my layers are as thin, but as durable as possible. That's kind of the tricky, the tricky little combo you're trying to get here. Uh, you can definitely use quilt cotton. Quilt cotton would be great for the lining of this bag as well. If you're using quilt cotton, I do suggest you go ahead and interface that with your woven interfacing. I'm also gonna be using mesh. Now, the pattern calls for like an elastic, kind of stretchy lining pocket. And I just, I'm sorry, I just don't work with like elastic, elastic. I don't, I don't know how to do it. I don't have the time to learn it right now. So instead of the elastic pocket, which is beautiful, uh, I'm gonna make a mesh pocket. And so I just have this mesh fabric and it is stretchy, but I'm not, I'm not really counting on the stretch today. I'm just, I'm just making a fun mesh pocket. So I just have one package of this. This is from Biani. The pattern also suggests you have a 16th of a yard of leather or something like that. You want something that is non-fraying and can have raw edges. So you can see on my first bag, I did use just actual leather right here, which is great. Um, for this bag, I'm gonna be using the vinyl for that piece, but get creative with this. If you also wanna use the leather for your crossbody bag, go ahead and do that. I mean, there's a, you can see we're gonna be tweaking quite a few different things today. So I encourage you to do the same. Okay, so here's most of the hardware for today. For the strap and the handle, I'm using this seatbelt webbing. I love the seatbelt webbing. This is one and a half inch wide. So when you're doing the strap and the handle, you can use whatever size you want. You can make it out of your quilt cotton or your wax canvas or your leather, whatever you want, or you can use pre-made stuff. It's all fine. Um, it doesn't have to be just an inch wide, but for the strap, the crossbody part, you need to make sure your hardware matches your strap size. So this strap is one and a half inch wide. I'm actually not going to be doing swivel hooks on this. This will not be a removable strap. It will be a sewn in its permanent strap. So for that, I'm gonna be using two rectangle rings. So I'm not using D rings. I'm gonna be using two rectangle rings and these are gonna be connected to tabs made out of the webbing and also the crossbody strap. 
and these are both one and a half inches wide. And then I have a slider because it is still an adjustable crossbody strap and that needs to be one and a half inches. It needs to be the same width as your webbing. Since I'm doing that mesh pocket, I'm just gonna use this elastic binding. You don't have to use a stretchy binding. Again, I'm not doing a stretch stitch or anything like that. I'm not counting on the pocket being stretchy. Uh, you could just use a piece of waterproof canvas. You could use some cool cotton, but this is quick and easy. And I'm just gonna sew this onto the top of that mesh. I've got this beautiful zipper tape. You're gonna have two zippers today, one for the top of the bag, one for the lining of the bag. So you're gonna need a 10 inch long zipper for the lining and at least a 16 inch long zipper for the top. I might make mine a little bit longer. So you're gonna have to have two zipper pulls to go with that. Okay, the bag's closure for the flap uses Velcro. I don't have Velcro. So I'm using magnetic snaps, which gets a little hairy, but I, I want us to just give it a shot, okay? I'm using rivet backed magnetic snaps, which means the back of it looks like a rivet. So I actually have it go through the flap and you see the rivet on the front of the flap. We're gonna mess with placement for this because I feel like on the first bag, the, uh, the, the closures are a little low, it's a little tight. So I, I'm gonna, we're gonna play with this just a bit. You can just sew on Velcro and that's super fast, super easy. Honestly, you don't have to have a closure at all. It's, it's a messenger bag. I mean, I don't think a messenger bag really needs it, especially if you have a good weight on the flap, if you're using vinyl or anything for your flap, you could just leave off the whole closure entirely and just let the flap just hang over, up to you. And then I have rivets because this is how I'm gonna be setting my crossbody strap. I have my bag tag to sew on. I've got my sew-in label. This one says, it took forever to make. This bag doesn't take forever, but it will take some time. For my thread, I'm using a Tex 45 weight thread. This is nice and chunky and it's colorful and it looks really nice. It does work on my Bernina 770, but it might be a little thick for other machines. So you can check out the Tex 35 weight. That works really nicely on other domestic machines. And then for the bobbin, I just have this Guterman thread. This is from Joann's. And then my needle today is going to be a Microtext 8012 needle. If those last seams seem bulky, I might bump it up to a 9014. So it's always good. I suggest you always have Microtext 8012 and Microtext 9014 or a jeans needle. You need a heavier one that's not gonna break when you go through those thick seams. All right, here's a bunch of the other stuff. Hopefully I got it all. First, my rivet press, if you're interested in the rivet press, I highly, highly recommend it. it it's fantastic. Um, I have a whole video going over that. And then my beacon three in one glue. This is just like my standard glue. If, if something needs to be glued down, this is a good glue for it. Obviously lots and lots of little clover clips. I have my double sided tape here. This is for installing the zipper and the lining. My marking tools, I like to have an air racing marker, a vinyl marker, and a chalk marker. I have a stiletto here, which is helpful for when I'm sewing. This is actually really good too for marking on wax canvas. So when you're drawing out your pattern pieces, when you have to mark midpoints and things like that on wax canvas, marking tools don't always work, but you can just kind of scrape this on there and it leaves a really cool mark. A turning tool as always, a lighter for cleaning up any little bits of threads. I have a scrap piece, this is Decoville Heavy. It can be anything, it can be a scrap piece of vinyl, it can be a scrap piece of fusible fleece. Scrap piece of something for installation of magnetic snaps. My scissors are my Kai scissors, and then I have a small pair of tulip pink snips just to clean it all up. So let's start with the main pattern pieces. First we have the front and back. This is just the front and the back of the bag. You're gonna have two cuts of your lining for this, and then two cuts of your exterior. Like I said, I'm not using any interfacing today because I don't really need to, but if you're using any like quilt cotton or cotton lycra, you're gonna wanna add some woven interfacing to it. If you're using a cotton canvas, cotton canvas does fray pretty easily, but it's pretty heavy duty, so you don't have to add woven interfacing to that. If you want this bag to be more structured, you can add Decoville Light, Sofuse Plus, you can add whatever you want to firm it up, and if you're worried about the seams, just make sure that your interfacing is cut a little bit smaller so it's not in the seams. And then over here I have my flap. So this is just the flap that goes over the front of the bag and you're gonna need a lining cut as well. All right, let's talk front and back pocket. On the front of the exterior of this bag, you're gonna have this accordion pocket, which is really cool, but you don't have to do it. If you wanna make the front pocket the same as the back pocket, you can definitely do that. Most pockets on this bag are completely up. I mean, I think all the pockets are actually optional on this bag. So only do what you're comfortable with. I am gonna be doing the accordion pocket because I think it's pretty neat and I wanna show you how to do it. So for that, I have my wax canvas and I have my waterproof canvas for the lining. 
we are gonna be folding this a lot and then those folds are gonna be in a curved seam later. So I wouldn't suggest vinyl for this accordion pocket unless you have an industrial machine, you're used to sewing really thick seams. Otherwise, I would stick to a canvas, cool cotton, waterproof canvas, something like that. Then for the back pocket, you're gonna have a lining cut and an exterior cut. I am gonna be using vinyl for the back pocket. There's no folding, no accordion. This is just gonna be like a nice slip pocket with some dividers on the back. Next up, we have our gusset. You're gonna have two cuts of your exterior and two cuts of your lining for that. And then we have the zipper lining pocket. This is just two cuts of lining. Zipper pocket is optional. I think today I'm actually going to make this mandatory for my bag because I think I'm gonna turn the whole bag out through the zipper pocket instead of through the main lining panel. We're gonna try that out today. This is a bigger opening than what they suggest leaving in the main lining panel when you turn the bag out, and I think that's gonna be good for us. So we're gonna try turning it out through this pocket today. And then finally, we have these little tabs right here. These are just gonna cover the edges of our webbing that's holding the rectangle ring in place. The pattern does suggest you use some sort of a leather or something, something you can have raw edges with. So I'm just gonna use my vinyl. Then we have two cuts for our zipper ends. I do prefer to use quill cotton for zipper ends because you have to fold it a lot. I'm going to try it with the waterproof canvas because it is lightweight, but we might have to pull some scraps of quilt cotton out. And then we have the zippered closure. Now we have a, like a little paneled zipper closure on the top of this bag. For that, you're supposed to have two cuts of exterior and two cuts of lining. Now, because there is so much folding and sewing and folding and sewing, I wanna keep this as lightweight as possible. On the first bag, I used quilt cotton and the waterproof canvas. This bag, I'm just gonna use four cuts of my lining material for it. And then you can see over here, I have the lining elastic pocket. I'm actually not really using this template for the uh, mesh pocket that I'm gonna be doing. I really just wanna know the height of this, and then I'm just gonna drape it over my panel, sew it down, and then trim off the edges. That's just easier than pre-cutting mesh in a, you know, in a roundish shape. So let's start with that neat accordion pocket. You're gonna take your exterior cut for your accordion pocket, lay it right side up. Take your lining cut, lay it right side down. And if you have a directional print, we're working on the top, the topper, to the upper part, top part, uh, and just line them up, right sides together. And then grab your clips, and let's clip along the top edge. And now let's sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have those sewn together, we're going to press them wrong sides together. So if you're using quilt cotton or anything where you can use your iron, that's gonna probably be the easiest way to do it. What I do is I just take like one side, like the lining side here, and I just finger press it, and then I'll fold it back like that, right on that edge. And as I'm folding it back, I use some clips here. I'm just trying to get it straight. That's always the, hard, that's always the hardest thing for me is to keep things straight. Everything ends up a little wobbly, a little wonky, a little tilted. Let's see, I'm just gently pulling on this. I want, I want you guys to also make sure you give yourself some wiggle room here. Um, when you're lining up all these edges, so let's see for here. I mean, it's, it lined up pretty well, but sometimes like the lining or the exterior is gonna be a little tiny bit longer. They're not gonna line up perfectly on all edges sometimes. If that's the case, just remember, we're using a 3 8 inch seam allowance everywhere today. So if it's off by a 16th of an inch, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't. Having a bigger seam allowance gives us more room for error. It means everything doesn't have to match up perfectly, okay? And it's especially true for the curves. We'll talk about it again later. So now let's take this to the sewing machine and let's top stitch along this top edge right here at a quarter inch seam allowance. While we're there, we can also baste along the three remaining raw edges. So at this point, the pattern suggests using this placement right here. This is the hook and loop fastener. So this is gonna be your Velcro um, to line up. You would line up the bottom edge and the side edge. And this is gonna be placement for your Velcro, okay? Like I said, I'm not using Velcro. I think it's a great option, but I'm not using Velcro today. So before we do this, I just wanna inspect this bag just a little bit. Now this, it looks great, but I do feel like it's a bit tight, especially if this bag is full of stuff. But I don't want this. These, these magnetic snaps are a little tricky. I'll be honest with you, they are a little tricky. Just to give you a heads up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the female magnetic snaps on the pocket here first, and then I wait until the very end, like the bag is done, before I install the male snaps. You can see I have the rivets showing through on the front. Now, if you have snaps that have the prongs, obviously you can't do that. Um, remember, 
If you don't want a closure at all, you don't have to use one. You could also use buckles here if you want to add buckle attachments. There's a lot of things you can do here, but we're going to do the magnetic snaps today. And I think I was thinking about raising up this a little bit. I think I will raise them up like a half of an inch. Yeah, I'll raise up the position of these snaps by a half of an inch. So I'll give you the measurements for that. Okay, so for a placement for this, I found the midpoint of the long top line and I'm going to use that midpoint of this long top line and just draw a circle. And then I'm going to use my stiletto and punch a hole through that circle. So this is the midpoint on the long line and that's about half of an inch up from the middle of the hole hook and loop fastener rectangle there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the bottom edge and the left side with my pocket. There we go. So once you have it lined up, use a marking tool and mark placement for that little dot. Again, this is just for magnetic snaps. So I have that placement mark there. Now you can see I basted this. So as I install my magnetic snap, it's going to go through the other side. I'm okay with that because again, I'm using rivets. If you are not using rivets, don't base down these sides. If you did base them down, get the seam ripper out, rip them out. Um, don't base down the sides because you're going to want those prongs to go between the exterior and the lining. But I'm just going to be using rivets today. So now to do the other side, I'm just going to flip my pattern piece over, match up the bottom edge and the right edge as best I can. It's not going to match up on the top because we already sewed it down. And then I'm going to mark placement there we go now we're just now we just kind of hope for the best that's the hard part about doing this is that you just kind of have to hope it works out so now i'm going to grab my hole punch i'm going to punch out the holes and i'm punching through the exterior in the lining once again you don't have to go through the lining if you remove the basting stitches around the bottom and the sides just flip the lining out of the way and you can just install this on the exterior that's what i did on the first bag this one I'm okay with the rivets showing on the back. So I'm going to just punch this out. There we go. Now I'm going to grab my two female snaps with the rivet backs and I just put it so that the female part is on the exterior right side and then the little cap goes on the lining right side. And you see it looks nice. The only thing you would, you know, be concerned about is if that metal rubs against anything, but I think it'll be okay. I forgot to show you the dies that go with this, but for magnetic rivet snaps, you're going to have three dies. You're going to have two bottom dies and one top die. The top die looks like a rivet die, so it's like a little bowl, and that's just to go with that side there. And then the bottom die looks like a male or female magnetic snap, and you just use the opposite of whatever you're setting. It's really quick. And since I forgot, <laughs> I did not put my extra interfacing in between these layers, which I do do kind of regret because I do like to add that deck of a heavy deck of a light, some sort of extra interfacing between the layers of material when I'm setting these snaps, but I did forget to do that. So we should still be okay. These snaps are nice and sturdy. So you can see, I'm just setting them. There we go. Okay. So now I need to mark some lines. First, I'm going to find the midpoint. So I'm going to press it right here. I'm going to mark it with my stiletto. Now wax canvas shows marks, but they do kind of mesh and fade over time. But I just want to mark the midpoint on the top and the bottom here. And now we're going to mark some lines. We're going to mark three lines coming in from each of the short edges at a half of an inch each time. So we're going to go in from the left edge, a half of an inch, another half of an inch, and another half of an inch. Three lines that are half of an inch away from each other. Do that for both short edges going in towards the center. All right, so I've got those three lines on each side, and now we're gonna mark some lines in the middle as well, which is where this midpoint comes in handy. So make sure you still have your midpoint marked. And first, I'm just gonna mark a straight line that is my midpoint. And remember, you're using some sort of fabric marking tool. I'm using a stiletto. Maybe you're using an air erasing marking tool, maybe a vinyl marking tool if that's, what you're, if that's your material. Just make sure you're using a fabric marking tool. And now I'm going to mark two lines on each side of this, a half of an inch away from the middle line and then another half of an inch away. Same on the other side, half of an inch to the left, half of an inch to the left. All right. I know we have a lot of lines here. So let's go ahead and pre-fold this. If you have quilt cotton, you can iron this, but on the side over here, what we want to do is this, the innermost line here is a mountain fold. So you're going to fold that lining sides together, just like this. And honestly, I don't even really pay attention to this middle line 
This first line we drew over here, this one closest to the raw edge, that's your placement line. That's where you want the mountain fold to go. So we're gonna just take this and fold it up to meet that placement line. I find that it's a little bit easier to kind of wrap my head around it if I just think of it that way. That way I'm not worried too much about what's folding which way. There we go. So you can see I'm just adding clips here. Like I said, if you have quilt cotton, go ahead and iron this to keep that fold there. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So the one closest towards the center, that third line is a mountain fold. I'm just gonna fold it like a little mountain. There we go. And then, again, I'm just kind of bypassing that middle line. I'm going straight to the line that's closest to the raw edge. And my mountain has to come to meet that line over there. That's called the placement line. I'm just gonna go all the way over there. There we go. And as you do this, you're naturally doing a valley fold, which means exteriors are coming together on that middle line that we're ignoring. <laughs> there we go. All right, so we've got the sides done. Now we gotta do the same thing for the middle. Now for the middle, the outermost lines, those are your mountains, and this one center line, that's your placement for both of them. So they're both gonna come meet at the same place. So I'm going towards the outermost line here, I'm just gonna fold right along it. There we go. And I'm just gonna fold it up to meet that middle line. And if this is a little confusing, that's okay. <laughs> uh, I had to use the seam ripper a lot when I made this the first time. So this, this took a lot of practice for me. There we go. All right, so there's that one. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This outermost, rightmost line mountain fold it, which again just means lining sides together. And then I'm gonna fold that up just to meet the other edge now. And don't get too attached to where everything is. You might have to move it around a little bit once we put it onto the panel. There we go. Isn't that cute? It's, it's super simple. It takes a little bit of practice. I hope that me kind of like really walking you through it helps, but it's pretty neat. All right, so now we gotta get our front exterior panel. So here's my front exterior panel. If you haven't already, just good practice, midpoints on the top and the bottom. Just go ahead and mark them now. All right, so take your exterior front panel, lay it right side up, and grab that fun accordion pocket. And we're going to attach it to the bottom edge. Now, your accordion pocket is a rectangle. You have sharp edges. Your front pocket is rounded. Don't worry about that. Your mid middle placement line here, that's your midpoint of your accordion pocket. We wanna line that up with the midpoint mark on our front exterior panel. So if you've got some clips, you can kind of remove them. And then we're gonna to go to the sides. So we got the midpoint good. If you wanna mark a midpoint line going all the way down the front, you can definitely do that as well. And now let's clip the sides in place. Again, I'm not, I'm not concerned about the rounded edges here. I'm just gonna clip most of the side. You can kind of look at the back. If you need to mush it around a little bit, you can. That's a nice thing. If you're like, well, my accordion pocket's a little bit too short or a little bit too long, you can move it around and move these folds around. These folds are not law, okay? You move it around however you want. It's supposed to be a three-dimensional thing here. It's not, it's not flat. What we want to do now is we want to stitch down the valley folds. So let's talk about that. I'm going to take these clips off, just kind of clip it like this. When you open this up, remember I told you we were ignoring those valley folds? Well, the valley folds were like on the sides here. That's that middle line right there. We're actually going to move the mountain peak out of the way, and we're gonna stitch right along that middle valley fold. Not the placement line, not the mountain line. The valley fold. We're gonna do that on this side, and we're gonna do that over here on this side. And ha clipping everything together is going to help you here. But also, just don't, don't worry too much about it. So move this over, I'll lift this up. So you can see over here, I have my one, two, three lines. This valley fold is like right in the crease. That's what I'm gonna be sewing down. And then let's look at the middle here. Again, I'm gonna kind of clip this. And for the middle, the middle's a little bit trickier, okay? So I would suggest doing one at a time. So let's just kind of move this out of the way. In the middle, you have two valley folds and they're the lines closest to the middle line, okay? So I would suggest doing one at a time. And again, if it's not perfect, that's perfectly fine, okay? So let's go to the sewing machine and just top stitch along all the valley folds. I do suggest you back stitch at the top 
really well so that as this is used, those don't come undone. Okay, I know it looks like a mess because you have to undo so much of it when you're sewing down those valley folds, but this is again one of those moments where it's like, just focus on the task at hand. We can fix it. So we're gonna go back to our sides over here, refold those mountain peaks, bring them over to their placement lines. This is why we mark so much stuff. This is also why you press it either with an iron or with your fingers so that it's like the fabric has muscle memory, you know? There we go, there's that. Let's go back over here. We have our mountain folds and if it doesn't go back exactly where it was before that's okay if there's a slight gap between these two pockets here that's okay all right let's refold this one back towards the center as best we can and then over here on the very far side let's fold it down the biggest thing is when you're refolding these just make sure it's nice and flat on this bottom seam here. You don't want a bunch of ripples because we will be sewing all of that down. So this down here needs to be nice and flat. All right, so it says to just kind of base down some of these pleats, but we're gonna do that in a minute anyways. I, I find that this is fine. I think it's sewn on enough. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm not using the template that they provide, but I just flip it over and you see how I can see my pocket kind of overhanging. I'm holding it together because it does want to kind of un come undone. I'm holding it together and I'm gonna use my front panel as a guideline while I just cut right around that corner. There we go. And you can see I do trim down some of the fold. That's okay. Reclip it. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm just gonna hold it together so that it's not all willy nilly. Hold it together. Use, I'm using the back side of the front panel as my guideline and just trim right around that corner. You might have to kind of readjust so that you can get that fold of the accordion pocket. There we go. And again, if it's not a perfectly smooth curve, guys, it's gonna be so good. It's, it's perfect, don't worry about it. Alrighty. Oh, look at you, you look so good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go base down around the edges and the bottom. And as we do that, we are gonna be going over all these folds. That's something I want you to think about. We've got a lot of folds here, right here, right here. And this is on a curve, which means it's also gonna be sewn in with another gusset, right? That's why I suggested if you're not used to working with a really thick material, maybe don't use the really thick vinyl today. So we're just gonna go around the sides and the curves and the bottom at an eighth of an inch seam allowance, just basting it all together. There you go. See, it's not that bad. I know it seems really like, but it has to be perfectly right here and perfectly right here. But once it's done, look, it opens up. That fold there, it's okay. It's going to kind of unfold and refold on itself. It's supposed to do that. It's, I love it. I really love it. Okay, so go ahead and put this to the side. Now we're gonna work on the flap, and here's the thing about the flap, it does want you to put down your Velcro on the lining side of the flap, but we're not doing Velcro. The thing with the pockets is that it's very hard to know for sure that it's gonna go in the right spot. So if you wanted to use the midpoint of this rectangle here to try to match it up, and then it's, it's very tricky. So we're gonna build the flap first. I'm not installing the magnetic snaps until the very end, but if you're doing magnetic snaps with the prongs, I'm gonna to try to give you some advice before we get to that point to help you with this, okay? So grab your exterior front flap and your lining flap panel and lay them right sides together. We are going to clip them. All edges need to match up, but we're focused on the sides and the bottom and the rounded corner. We are not gonna be sewing the top straight edge. All right, now let's take this to the sewing machine and sew along all of the clipped edges at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you leave the top straight edge unsewn and backstitch at the beginning and the end up here by the top because we're gonna turn it all out. You don't want that to rip. Okay, once you have them sewn, what you can do is you can just kind of trim down the seam allowance. You can trim it down to a quarter inch seam allowance or you can trim it down in half. I always like to smooth these out a little bit, especially on these kind of rounded flaps. Helps remove the bulk. And then for these curved corners here, you're gonna wanna clip into it. So when you're clipping into it, you can see I'm just kind of clipping, I'm using the back of my scissors very gently and I'm just going about halfway through this leftover seam here. I'm not getting too close to the thread because 
depending on how thick your material is and how hard you push on those corners when you turn this out, you could end up ripping your thread if you kind of get this cut too close. So just be careful. It just, it just takes practice, honestly. So now let's flip this right side out. It's helpful. You can use one of these turning tools. I'm going to use the more blunt end here. I'm just kind of rub it in there nice and gentle. Especially if you have longer nails, this is a nice thing to use. You don't have to worry about your nails kind of clawing through it, you know? I don't have long nails. So I have little nubs, little finger nubs. <laughs> All right, so that looks really good, actually. So now what we want to do is flatten this out. If you're using cool cotton, go ahead and grab that iron, flatten it out. I'm going to roll my seams. So I'm just going to roll my seams, and I'm going to do this from the front, from the vinyl side. And my goal right now is to not see the edge of the lining peeking through. So you can see sometimes it kind of wants to roll this way. I don't want that. I want it to roll and be nice and flat so I don't see the lining. If the lining ends up peeking through a little bit, it is what it is, right? That's why we use material we like. But this is actually working out really well. This vinyl is working out really well. This is a textured vinyl from Backstitch Fabrics. It's not very thick. Wow, <laughs> it's actually folding and everything really well. I'm used to fighting vinyl. Um, yeah, I highly recommend this vinyl. This is perfect. Oh yeah, that looks great. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna top stitch around this folded edge here where you just clipped your seams. You wanna top stitch around there at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. You can also base stitch to the top unless, don't base stitch the top if you're using magnetic snaps that have the prongs. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna see if we can work that out. So let's just, for now, let's just top stitch around all the clipped edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, so we have our flap. It looks amazing. I mean, right? Let's see what we can do with this. So the first thing I want you to think about if you're using the magnetic snaps, this po these pockets, they're movable, right? Sometimes they might be over here, sometimes they might be over here. So perfect placement for snaps is gonna be a little difficult, but let's get this flattened out the way you think it's gonna be in the end. I will tell you that my magnetic snaps are going to be placed about three quarters of an inch up from the bottom edge. So we know how high they need to be. That's probably the hardest thing if you haven't made this bag already is like, is it gonna be up here? Is it gonna be down here? I don't know how this is gonna go. Mine is three quarters of an inch up from the top edge. So if you know that much, what you can do is grab your ruler and measure the distance between your two magnetic snaps, okay? And that the distance is, we have a midpoint here. So we're gonna measure the distance. So from center of this magnetic snap to center of this magnetic snap, it's about six and one quarters of an inch for me. It might be different for you. Six and one quarters of an inch between these snaps, okay? So that means if I go to my lining panel here, if I fold this in half, again, fabric marking tool, not a Sharpie. No Sharpies allowed in the sewing room, okay? I'm just gonna mark the midpoint on the bottom edge here. And then what I know now is that they're gonna be three quarters of an inch high. So I can line up my ruler, three quarters of an inch high. And then they're gonna be six and a quarter inch apart. So divide that by two. That's gonna be three and one eighth inch. So I'm gonna measure three and one eighths away from the midpoint mark to the right. So three and eighths inch over here and three quarters of an inch up and right there should be the placement for my magnetic snap. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one. So if you wanted to do this and install your magnetic snaps through just the lining, you have this nice big opening here, you can mark your placement and install the male ends of your magnetic snaps now, put the prongs in the middle, make sure you add some extra stabilizer here, something between them, and you should be good, okay? If you're using the rivet back ones and you don't mind the look of the rivets on the front, follow along with me. We're going to do at the very end where I pretty much just take this, push it down, figure out where the spots are. But we'll do the same measurement. We'll see if it works out with the same measurement, okay? Okay, before I move on to the back, I do want to make sure I put on my tag because I forget that all the time. I'm going to have my tag go above this front pocket. I know it will be covered up by a flap, but I think I still like that. It's You'll see it when you need to see it. I'm going to set up my tag an inch and a half up from the top edge of my pocket. And you guys want to know something I did last time? I'm going to do it this time too. So with wax canvas, nothing sticks to it. You can put tape all over it. The stickiest tape you got, nothing sticks to this. 
Um, and I already have a hard time keeping these straight with, with measuring and with tape because again, I'm always a little wonky. What I actually have been doing is I'm gonna line up my tag. Does that look straight? No, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> I'm gonna line up my tag so that it looks straight. Ah, uh, it's as good as it's gonna get. Um, it looks pretty straight to me. And then what I'm doing, cause again, wax canvas, I'm gonna trace around my tag on the wax canvas with a stiletto. This is not a pen or anything, it's just a stiletto. Very gently, I'm not ripping anything, I'm just making a mark. Look at that, all the way around. Now, watch. Yeah, I got a little, and so when I go to the sewing machine, I can just line this up and I can keep an eye on that as I'm sewing it. Okay, I'm gonna go top stitch down my um, tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So I don't know if you could tell, but with my tag, I don't actually back stitch at the beginning and the end, but I leave the tails really long. So the bobbin and the top thread tails, very long. I don't use an automatic thread cutter, anything like that on the machine. So long tails, and now I'm gonna take the bobbin ones and I'm just gonna gently pull on them. And I see a little loop on the back and that's the top thread and I just pull it to the back. So all four threads will now be on the back side. And then I take those four threads and I divvy them up into two and two. And then I do three knots, nice and tight. So now when you turn it over, you can't really tell where the beginning and the end of the stitching is, which is a cool look. I mean, something only a bag maker would probably appreciate, but I am a bag maker and I appreciate it. Okay, we can set these two panels to the side now. Now grab the exterior and the lining pieces for your back pocket panel piece. Uh, and, and this is just a very simple slip pocket. If you wanna do this exact pocket on the front, you can. You don't have to do the accordion pocket. Um, you can just do this. And you can still add the magnetic snaps if you wanted to as well. You're just gonna have to be, you're gonna have to think more about where you wanna place it. So let's take these panels and lay them right sides together. And we're focused on the top straight edge right now. So clip along that edge, but just, you know, maybe add a clip on the corners just to make sure it doesn't get too, too wild over here. All right, now let's sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at both sides. Now we're going to take our panels and we're gonna press them wrong sides together. If we have an iron, go ahead. I'm gonna just push along my lining like this and then fold back my vinyl, which again, this vinyl is completely surprising me with how easy it is to fold like that. Oh, it's just like, it's like crispy. It's kind of like bacon. <laughs> like it's just, it's like, tss. oh, that's a nice, that's a nice crisp fold, you know? Right. And then I always like to go down to the bottom and just make sure I don't have like this situation going on. Just doesn't have to be perfect. This has to be mostly in the same area. Okay, so now let's top stitch a half of an inch from the folded edge right up here. Once you have that top stitch, grab your back panel. If you haven't, mark your midpoints on the top and bottom. Okay, so take your back panel and lay it right side up. Take your back panel pocket and just line up the sides and the bottom rounded corners. If you wanna base the lining in the exterior of your pocket before you attach it, you definitely can. It might make it a little bit easier to keep everything straight. Um, my material is in pretty good shape. It's laying pretty flat, so I'm not worried about it. Okay, so now you can be super creative with this. If you wanna create three pockets, you can create three pockets. If you want to be one big slip pocket, you can do that. If you wanna make a midpoint pocket, you can do that. I think for this pocket, I'm gonna baste along the sides and the bottom to hold it in place. And then I'm just gonna do one row of stitching that goes up the middle, over one stitch, and down the middle. So that way it's just, it's just a nice dividing line, but it's good to have two rows of stitches to divide that line. So I'm gonna mark that midpoint line real quick. I don't know if you can see it, but I have a silver line right here going right down the middle. I'm just gonna sew just to the left of it up, go over one stitch, go down the right of it, just to make a nice, nice divided pocket here. How cute is that? I love it. Let's do the handle now. Okay, so I'm just using this, so cool, isn't it? This cool webbing, um, it's one and a half inches wide. Webbing does like to fray and shed, so I like to just melt the edges down. Even though this isn't going to be seen, it's just comforting to know it's there. So you can grab your front and back template, and it shows you right here where the handle goes. Uh, what I like to do is just line it up where it says the handle goes, 
and then I'm gonna go down like this. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. I'm just gonna mark the midpoint because my handle is not the same width as this marking here. So I'm just gonna mark the midpoint of the handle. I'm gonna flip it over, line it up, push it down just a little bit, kind of find the lines, and then mark the midpoint. There we go. So I'll just line up the midpoint of my strap with that. So I'm gonna take my strap. Here's, you might wanna do this too. I'm gonna take a ruler and just put it on the top like that. I'm gonna find the midpoint of my strap. And I'm gonna line it up with that midpoint mark over here on the left. And then I'm gonna have my strap overhang a half of an inch. This way you don't have to worry about the strap, like I said, like the edges fraying, eventually coming out, if it's being used a lot and tugged on, then like all these little bits falling down. You know what I mean? You just, it's just a little bit less of a headache. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. But now look, see my strap's going down like this. And if you wanna just base this on first, that's definitely an option, you can do that. You can just base this on right now so you don't have to worry about it. But I'm just gonna clip it and I'm gonna fold this up. So keep the strap straight as you twist it up to meet the other mark. Now it's, it's kind of a tight fit. So what you wanna do is you actually kind of fold your strap like this. So I'm gonna bring my strap over, get the midpoint lined up with the midpoint I marked and have it overhang a half of an inch I'm gonna clip it in place. I know you feel like you're pulling up on the other side. Don't worry about that, just right. Just clip it down, get it there. And then you see what you do, you just kind of fold this under and you don't have that pull so much anymore, okay? So now let's go base these down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I gotta buy more of this webbing. How cool, that look, these look, this looks good together, doesn't it? I know it does. You can go ahead and put this back panel to the side now. So you're gonna grab your two loops. So for me, that's just gonna be the same webbing that I used for everything else. Uh, these are three inches long and I need to burn them down because they are already starting to fray. So I'm just gonna burn them down a little bit. Now I'm using rectangle rings because I'm using a non-removable crossbody strap. If you're using a crossbody strap that has a hook on it, you don't wanna use rectangle rings because what happens is, what happens is that hook won't stay in the middle. It's gonna go off to the side and you're gonna have a situation like this. So don't use rectangle rings with swivel hooks. Use a D-ring. The only reason I'm not using a D-ring today is because I don't have a D-ring in this size. So that's why we're doing a non-removable crossbody strap. You do whatever is comfortable for you. So take your loop and just go along the flat side of your D-ring if you have a D-ring or just one of your sides of your rectangle ring and fold it around just like that. And now let's just base along these raw edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your two exterior cuts of your gusset and if you have a directional print, make sure you think about that, but we're gonna be working on the top edges of our gusset. Go ahead and fold up there, mark your midpoint on the short top edge of both of them. And now with your gusset right side up and using that midpoint, let's mark down three inches. Now I'm just gonna use a stiletto to mark on here where that is. So three inches centered from the top. Okay, and that mark gives us placement for our rings here. So again, mine is a different size than the patterns, so I'm just gonna use that to help me. Also, if it's helpful because you're using a different size, go ahead and mark the middle of this little three inch line right here. Because you, you, you do want these to be centered, you wanna think about that. So let's mark the midpoint. There we go. So now I know it's three inches down and here's the middle of my gusset. Now I'm gonna take my loop with my ring on it and I'm going to center it on that mark. It's easy for me, I have these checkers, I know it's just right in the center of these middle squares, and that's how I'm gonna sew it down. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew about a half of an inch up from this bottom raw edge just to stitch down this loop and rectangle ring. I'm gonna do that for both pieces of my gusset. Okay, here we go, so just double check to make sure your rectangle rings are pointed up towards the top, everything looks good. So now you're gonna grab your little leather loop holder, mine's not leather, um, and what you can do is you can measure three and a half inches down from this top edge over here, your top short edge. All right, so I just made these little marks right here. They're, it's about a half of an inch below where the bottom raw edge of your loops are. And all you do is just line up your little rectangle right above that mark. And you see what it does? It just covers the raw edges. It's just, it's just really cute. Now you can use glue here. I did use the Beacon 3-in-1 glue when I was using leather. Um, I think for this one, I think I can get away with just clipping it. But if you're worried that you're not gonna be able to hold this in one place because it is kind of bumpy, definitely glue it first, let that dry, and then stitch it down. But I think I'll be okay with just, 
We'll try just clipping it. So now we want to top stitch along the bottom and the top of these little rectangle loop holders here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. If it's easier, use a zipper foot so you can get closer to the rectangle rings. Look how cute that is. I like it. Let's put some rivets on it. So the pattern does suggest you put a rivet right in the middle and then stitch a little triangle around it. That would be very cute. My straps are a little bit wider, so I'm gonna do two rivets, but I'm not gonna do them right in the center because I don't want my rivet to go into the raw edge of my webbing. I kind of want it up a little bit higher, which is okay for me. I don't mind it up not centered. So I'm just kind of feeling around and I'm actually just gonna use the grid marks on my webbing to help me get this figured out. There we go. Pretty much it's just each dot is about a half of an inch in from each side of the webbing since this is a one and a half inch webbing, right? And you can see they are not centered vertically, which I'm okay with. So now I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm just gonna punch into those two dots. All right, I'm gonna grab my rivets. I'm just gonna snap them in real quick. All right, I've got my rivets snapped in. Now I just need to set them. So now let's just press these in here. So now once you're done, you're gonna take your gusset panels and you're gonna lay them right sides together. And both of the, the rings, your D-rings, your rectangle rings, they need to be on the same side. So both over here for me on the left. We're gonna match up the bottom short edges and clip together. And now we're gonna sew along the short edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So once I have these sewn together, I'm actually gonna top stitch this open. So I'm just gonna flip it over, press the seam open. I'm gonna finger press it flip it back over with the seam pressed open. And I'm just gonna top stitch along each side of that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. It just helps keep it really flat and I don't have to deal with that bulk when we sew it all together. Here we go, guess it's done. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and build the exterior before we even do the lining. Let's just, let's just do it, let's just get out of the way. It's the hardest part. So let's first work on the front panel and lay that right side up and then take your gusset, and you're gonna lay your gusset right side down. Ooh, that's loud. And you're gonna match up the midpoint mark. So the midpoint mark on the bottom of your gusset is that seam connecting them, the seam, okay? And then you should have a midpoint mark on your front panel. Remember, we were talking about making sure we marked those in the beginning. So line up your midpoint mark on your gusset with your midpoint on your front panel bottom. Clip those together. I know that can be kind of a thick area right here with all that folding. That's why I said I didn't use vinyl for this part because it's pretty thick. So I like to clip the middle and then I clip on each side of it so it doesn't start swishing around on me. I'm gonna take the left side here, I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna match up this left corner just like that. We don't have any weird angles. It should match up pretty perfectly. I like to clip on the top edge and then over down towards the side. There we go. I'm gonna do the same thing on the right side, just pulling it up, matching up that corner, clipping on the top and on the side. And now we're gonna clip along the straight bits. So I'm gonna start over here on the right and I'm just adding clips on the straight bits here. If these pockets start getting in your way, you're gonna need to move them out of the way, okay? So just push that little mountain, you know those little mountains, push, push the mountain top out of the way. We always wanna make sure we know what we're focused on. I'm just focused on these seams right now, so everything else doesn't matter. It needs to be out of the way, and it needs to be something I don't have to think about. Because I can only think of one thing at a time, and right now, that's gonna be these, these seams. All right, once you have most of the straight bits clipped, then we're gonna take this and we're gonna flip it over. So we're looking at the back of the front panel, and this is just how I like to do curves. I'm gonna keep my gusset like a little wall standing up, and then I just kind of push down the rounded edge of my front panel like a bowl. So just push it in there. And I'm telling you guys, wax canvas, it almost becomes like Play-Doh. It will just mush where you need it to mush. <laughs> it doesn't pleat a whole lot, it doesn't fold on itself, it doesn't give you a headache, it just kind of, it it's just mushes in there. I don't know how else to put it. It mushes. So do the best you can right now if you're getting a lot of pleating 
on your front panel here where it's folding over itself a lot and you can't get it to line up perfectly, that's okay. Just get a good general idea of where you want everything to go. And then what you can do is flip it over to the gusset side and wherever you're having issues where the front panel is pinching in on itself, take your scissors and do a little quarter inch snip into the gusset only. And what that will allow to do is the gusset will spread out a little bit more so that you can keep your front panel straight. So once you have this all clipped, we're gonna flip it so we're looking at the back side of the gusset and we're gonna sew along the sides and the bottom and the other side at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. We're gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end and just go slow. As you're sewing, if you get down here to this corner and the front panel is going towards the right and this gusset is going towards the left and no matter what you do, you can't get them to come back together, you're gonna grab your scissors, you're gonna make a little quarter inch snip into the gusset only and you're gonna pull it back and it should fit nicely. I only cut little slits when I need to. I don't pre-cut this. I wait until I'm at the machine and if I'm struggling, instead of trying to rip it all apart and throw it out the window, I just cut little slits into the gusset and go slow. Okay, so you might have seen I did pull out the scissors for one corner. I have a little bit, I don't know if you can see, you can probably see that I have a little bit of bunching right there. But before I get the seam ripper out and start stressing out over this, I always suggest this, flip it out first. Because although on this side it might not look great, look at the other side. Okay, the other side might be fine. So when I flip this out, again, wax canvas, it's like putty. So that corner looks great. This corner also, where it's a little bumpy, it looks fine. It looks fine. And also, again, the nice thing with wax canvas is that as you use it over time, it gets kind of crinkly. It has a really cool distressed look. So no, you're never gonna, you, I, you won't even notice it anymore. If you want to clip down some of these rounded seams, you can, I don't, unless you absolutely have to, I would say leave them. If you're using vinyl and you need to clip them so that they look better, just clip little slits into it. So I'm gonna grab my back panel, lay it right side up. Take my unit with the gusset. I'm gonna take the whole thing and lay right side down. I'm working on the other side of my gusset now, the raw edge over here, matching up midpoints, right sides together. And then once again, I clip the midpoint and I clip just to the left of it and then just to the right of it. There we go. And then I go up here and I'm gonna clip this top left corner and then I'm gonna go do the straight edges. And at this point, it's honestly just a little bit easier just to flip the whole thing over and look at the back of your back panel and then just start going straight into bowl mode, even though we're working on the straight bits. It's just easier to work with this way. And then again with the curves here, I just kind of tuck it in there, tuck it in as best you can first and then figure out what you got to fix. So we got it all clipped. I'm going to flip it over so I'm looking at the wrong side of the gusset. I'm gonna push the rest of the bag out of the way so it doesn't confuse me. And I'm gonna go around again at a 3 8 inch seam allowance around all the edges and the curves, going nice and slow. I'll clip into the gusset if I need to. Back stitch really well at the beginning and the end, okay? It's not that bad. I mean, it's it very dependent on the material you're using. I will tell you with the wax canvas, it wasn't that bad for me. If you go through this, let me know. How is it for you? So now we're gonna flip the exterior right side out. It's looking very, very good. I love wax canvas. <laughs> I, I like the distressed look that it gets. I know it's not for everyone, but I like it. So now grab your flap, and if you haven't already, mark the midpoint on the straight edge of your flap. You're gonna look at the back panel here. Make sure you have your midpoint on your back panel. Take your flap and the exterior needs to be right sides down against the back exterior and match up those midpoint marks. 
I should have basted my top edge here. It's a little, little wobbly, that's okay. And then we're gonna pin these together. Now the flap should go to the seam, but it shouldn't go into it. So the flap is meant to be shorter, it's not as wide as the back panel. So it should get pretty close to that seam right there, but it shouldn't like go past it. There we go. So you can get a little, a little sneaky peeky. Doesn't that look, that looks good, doesn't it? I know it does, I know. So now let's baste along this clipped edge. You're gonna wanna make sure you move the other panel out of the way. You might wanna baste it from the inside of the bag like that. Just baste it at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to hold the flap in place. All right, there you go. Your exterior is pretty much done now. So I do kind of like that we do all that right now because this is probably like the hardest or the second hardest part. Building the lining, there's not as much pressure to make the lining perfect. So go ahead and put your exterior to the side. So now let's do the zipper pocket, which is optional, except it's not gonna be optional for me because I'm gonna turn the whole bag through this in the end. So I'm gonna find the midpoint on the long edge of one of my zipper pocket panels. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure one inch down. I'm working on the back side, so this is the back side. So on the wrong side of one of my zipper pocket panels, I'm gonna measure one inch down and draw a horizontal line. And then I'm gonna draw another horizontal line just below that, half of an inch. So my pocket is gonna be a half of an inch tall and I'm gonna make it eight inches wide. Okay, so here we go. One inch down from the top, it's eight inches wide. So I just use my four inch mark here to measure the midpoint, right? So four inches from each side. And then I made it half of an inch tall because my zipper tape is a little bit bigger. If you're using a smaller zipper tape, you can just make it three eighths of an inch tall. It's totally personal preference. So now grab one of your lining main panels, measure, find the midpoint on the top and the bottom. So then take your lining main panel and lay it right side up. And we're gonna measure one and a half inches down from the top middle of our main panel. And then you're gonna take, I don't know if you can see this, but you're gonna take your zipper panel that has the markings on the back and you're gonna lay that right side down. So it's lining right sides together with the zipper panel. And the top edge of the zipper panel is one and a half inches down from the top edge of your lining panel. I find this easiest to grab some tape. And I'm just gonna tape these together just like this. Just make sure it doesn't move on me when going from my table to my sewing machine. So now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch right along this inner rectangle. Remember this is an eight inch by half inch for me rectangle. And just go, make sure you get your needle right in the corners. So we're just gonna go around all four edges of that rectangle. So now we're gonna mark a midpoint line going right along the horizontal center of that rectangle. I know it's already drying. <laughs> and then you're gonna go from one of the corners and draw a diagonal line going towards that center line. So, and you're gonna do this for both corners. So you have like a little triangle right there. You're gonna do that on both sides, little triangles. How far they go in is up to you. If you want them to go really far in, the further they go in, the better. It'll be easier, but it's up to you. Now I'm gonna grab a seam ripper and I'm just gonna rip right along the center of that line in the middle, just so I can get my scissors in there. And then I'm gonna cut right along that middle line until I get to the tip of the triangle. And then I'll cut off towards the corner. And you wanna get as close as you can to the stitches in those corners without cutting the stitches. The nice thing about this is that since it is a lining pocket, it's okay if it's not perfect. So now take the lining and push it through that hole so that your pocket and your lining main panel are gonna be wrong sides together. Now I'm just gonna roll these seams with my fingers. You can get an iron out, press it with an iron if you'd like, whatever is easiest for you. Okay, and the big thing is you don't want this to be too tall of a hole, okay? It can't be wider than your zipper tape or else you're gonna have a problem. So get it as straight as you can. If you wanna use tape to hold it down, go ahead and use tape. If you wanna iron it, iron it. You just wanna get this as flat as possible. What I usually do is I flip it over after finger pressing it. And then while I work on the next step, I'll just put something heavy on top of it, kinda of hold it in place. There we go. Now we're gonna grab our zipper tape and it needs to be about 10 inches long. You want it to be longer than the pocket opening. So the pocket opening is about eight inches. You want it to be wider than that. So now I'm gonna grab one of my zipper pulls and I'm just gonna install one of my zipper pulls real quickly. So now let's grab the double-sided tape and we're going to apply the double-sided tape right along the very, very edge of each side of our zipper tape. 
All right, just give it a good press with your fingers so it sticks. Sometimes these, sometimes these wash away tapes, a little tricky to get to stick, but they work well. So now I'm gonna take my zipper and I'm gonna have it so that the pull when it's closed is going towards the left, okay? And then I'm gonna carefully remove the paper from the top edge so the tape is exposed. Let's grab our lining unit. And now I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna center it over my zipper. So just fold it up and make sure you're not off to the edge, okay? We have limited visibility here. So you wanna get this as centered as possible and then cover your zipper tape. Try to make sure the coils are in the center, but this is why we do it one part at a time. There we go, so I'm just gonna gently push that down. Now I'm gonna close my zipper so that I can get this as straight as possible. And then I just look at it with my eyeballs. It looks, it looks pretty good. So now, once I have this part pushed down, I'm gonna flip it up and I'm going to gently remove the paper from the other piece of double-sided tape. Go, flip it back down, and just press it down like that. There we go. All right, so now our zipper is taped in place. We can go to the sewing machine and let's top stitch around all four edges at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I always back stitch over the zipper coils right here. So remember, these zipper coils are plastic. They are not metal, they are plastic, so I can sew over them. I would not sew over metal zipper teeth. Uh, but I do backstitch over it. Also, I'm gonna be turning the whole bag through this hole, so I need to make sure that these seams right here are strong. I think it looks cute. <laughs> I love it, these seams are so cute. So I'm gonna move the zipper pull to the center, flip this over. I'm gonna take the remaining zipper panel and I'm gonna lay that right side down, matching it up with the edges of my other zipper panel. My zipper tape is overextending, that's okay. Um, I'm gonna trim that down after I'm done with this. So now, using my clips, I'm gonna clip along the sides and the top edge, but I'm actually gonna leave the bottom open so that we can turn the bag out through that. So if they don't line up perfectly, that's fine. A lot of times when we're doing these zipper pockets, as we turn it out, it causes the zipper panel to shrink a little bit. That's perfectly fine. Let's just get this mostly lined up. And then on this bottom edge here, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna fold it up by about 3 8 of an inch just make sure when you fold it up, and you can fold it up over here too if you want. But when you fold it up on the side, just make sure you fold it in the same direction. There we go. So now, I'm gonna flip this over, so I'm looking at the right side of the lining, and I'm gonna pull it out of my way. And I'm gonna sew along the clipped edges at about a 3 8 inch seam allowance all the way around. So on the sides, on the top, on the other sides. Backstitch really, really well, keeping this bottom edge folded. Backstitch really well down here on the beginning and the end, and we're just gonna leave that bottom edge open to turn the bag out. Okay, so now take the zipper pull and make sure that the zipper is a little more than halfway open. You don't have to have it all the way open because you don't wanna catch this at any point, but let's just get that all set up. And now this panel is ready to go, set it to the side. So to be completely honest with the mesh pocket, you can be very willy nilly with this. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab my mesh and I'm gonna try to find a straight edge. And I'm just gonna kind of lay it right side up. Let's see. And you can measure, you can measure the pattern piece and see how far it goes up. That's fine with me. About there is fine. I'm just gonna trim it. I always cut my mesh so it's bigger than it needs to be. The biggest thing with mesh is that I just want one edge that's straight because that's where I'm gonna put my elastic. Other than that, everything else doesn't matter to me. So I've got this one straight edge here and then I can figure out where I want it to go in a minute. Set that to the side. Now I'm gonna grab my elastic and I'm not stretching it or anything, but I'm just gonna cut it so it's about the same size as that straight edge up there, maybe a little bit longer. And now with these elastic pieces, it has like a little fold going right down the center. So you can decide, there's a matte side and then like a shiny side. Either side can be the right side. Maybe I'll make the shiny side the right side today. And so I'm just gonna lay it with the matte side up. I'm gonna take that straight edge of my mesh and just kind of lay it on top like that. And then I'm just gonna gently go down this edge and I just fold it over the mesh. I mean, as long as the mesh is caught in there, that's that's all I'm worried about. Just and with this, just be careful that you're not like stretching it 
while you're clipping it into place. Just gentle fingers, butterfly fingers here. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew along this edge at about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Honestly, you could just sew right down the center, um, but I go about an eighth of an inch from the open edge over here on the right. Very slowly, I use a stiletto to hold it all down. I can see through the mesh so I can make sure everything's lined up. If you wanna use a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch, if you do a zigzag stitch, it'll make it so this can be stretchy. Uh, it's totally up to you. I'm just doing a straight stitch. All right, so now we have the mesh pocket with the, on top. <laughs> Is it straight? Is it not straight? I mean, get a ruler out and make sure it's straight. How high or low do you want it? That's totally up to you. Let me see, here's the template for the elastic pocket. So you can always lay that on top and just kind of get an idea of where you want it. But this is, this is your pocket. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Yes, my mesh is way too big, but it's okay because I can see through it and I'm just gonna use that, like the guideline of the lining pocket as my, my line. So eighth of an inch from the edge of the lining pocket. And then I'll just trim down the mesh that I'm not using. All right, so once that's basted on, now I just cut down the mesh by just pretty much tracing the edge of my lining panel. And then if you wanna make little divider pockets in here, you definitely can. I'm just gonna leave it as one big pocket. I like to be able to put like a notebook or something in this pocket. So your two lining panels are done. Let's build the lining gusset. So lining gusset is just two pieces. Lay them right sides together. If you have a directional print, think about that. We're gonna sew them at the bottom. So right down here on this bottom short edge, we're gonna sew the gussets at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then once you're done sewing them together, you can just top stitch on both sides of that seam at an eighth of an inch seam allowance to keep it nice and flat. Once you have that all stitched, let's see, which one do we wanna do first? You can pick either one. If you're going to leave the opening in the lining bottom and you used mesh, don't leave it in that side. So in the pattern, you leave the opening to turn the whole bag out through one of the lining bottom edges. If you were gonna do that, I would do the lining bottom that has the zipper. It's a little bit easier to close that up in the end. Um, so, but since I'm doing the opening in the zipper, it doesn't really matter which panel I do this on. So I'm gonna start with my zipper panel, lay it right side up, take my gusset, lay it right side down, and match up that seam, which is my midpoint on my gusset, with the bottom midpoint mark on my lining panel, and then I'll clip those together. Now, when we sew these curves, I am not that particular. If there are pleats, then there are pleats, and there will be pleats, <laughs> because I'm going to increase the seam allowance on the bottom, so we're gonna get some pleats, and that is perfectly fine with me. So you can see I'm just clipping the corners, just like I did on the exterior, and then I'll clip the straight edges, and then I'll flip it around. And as I get towards those corners, I just make like a bowl shape. All right, once you have it clipped enough, flip it. So you're looking at the wrong side of the gusset. And now I'm gonna sew this at a 3 8 inch seam allowance at the tops, but a half of an inch seam allowance at the bottoms. So I'm gonna start at 3 8 of an inch. As I go down the straight edge, I'm gonna increase it to a half of an inch. As I go around the curves and the bottom and the other curve, half of an inch. Once I'm finishing, I'm gonna go back down to a 3 8 inch seam allowance. It's important that the seam allowance is 3 8 of an inch at the top, but if you wanna reduce the bagginess inside of the bag, increasing it at the bottom is gonna help. But doing that is also gonna make sure you have some pretty big pleats down here. Again, you can use the scissors and try to work it out if you don't want that. I'm okay with the pleats in the lining. So as you can see, We've got some pleats. It's fine. <laughs> it's just, I don't know, it's fine. So I'm gonna trim down the seam allowance now, especially around these bulky corners down here. We just don't need, we don't need that bulk in the bottom of this bag. And since this is a lining, you don't have a lot of pressure pushed against these corners like you do on the exterior. On the exterior, you know, it's flipped out, so you have a lot of pressure being pushed against these rounded corners. On the lining, it's pushed in like this. So it really doesn't get a whole lot of work. So you can trim the seams pretty pretty small down here on the corners. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the other sides. So take your other lining panel, lay it right side up. Take your panel with the gusset, lay it right side down. Let's match up those midpoint marks. Oh, I don't have a midpoint on this other panel. Once you have the midpoints done, then line up your gusset, right sides together, midpoint, 
the bottom of the gusset with the midpoint on the bottom of the lining panel clipped together. And then you get those corners. So once you have it all clipped, flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side of the gusset. And just like before, we're gonna sew it a 3 8 inch seam allowance at the top and a half of an inch seam allowance at the bottom. Make sure you back stitch really well at the beginning and the end up here at the top. If you're leaving an opening, you're gonna want about a six to seven inch opening down here centered on the bottom. And just make sure you back stitch around that. All right, and then once again, I'm going to trim down this seam allowance. If you left a hole on either side of the lining on the bottom to turn it out, don't trim the seam allowance where that hole is, okay? Leave the seam longer there. Just trim up to it and around it. And it'll make it easier to close in the end. But I'm trimming it all down. And there you go, the lining is ready to go. Now let's do the zipper panel. So trim your zipper tape down to 16 inches or longer. 16 inches is gonna be pretty perfectly snug in there. If you want it a little bit longer so you have more room to work with it, um, go like 18 inches or so. But I'm gonna grab my zipper pull and just install the zipper pull. So first thing we wanna do is the zipper ends. Now there are zipper end hardware pieces you could get which are really cute. I probably, I probably should have done that but I'm not going to. Um, you could also use quilt cotton, waterproof canvas, lots of options here. So I'm trying to decide how I wanna do this. I think I'm going to use a waterproof canvas and an iron to help with this. So the first thing I wanna do is grab a ruler and I'm gonna mark along all four edges, I'm gonna mark three fourths of an inch in. So a line on the back on the wrong side, three quarters of an inch in along all four edges. Okay, so you see I've got like a little grid, grid lines on the back. Um, this is just to help fold it the right way. So again, I'm looking on the back here and I'm gonna fold one of the edges wrong sides together up to meet its parallel marked line. And then I'm gonna press it with my iron. And here's the thing with waterproof canvas. First of all, you don't wanna to touch the back side of the waterproof canvas with the iron because it could melt some goo onto your iron. But also, whenever you get waterproof canvas hot, it wants to unfold right away. But if you, so if you heat it up and then just hold it down with your fingers, it'll just stay like this. So let's do this side. So you see I fold it. And then I'm just running the iron right along the crease. So I'm only touching the right side of the waterproof canvas. And you see when I lift the iron up, it opens up right away. But if I just kind of hold it down while it cools, just push it, it stays down. Isn't that great? So you're gonna do two parallel lines first. So two of these edges. And now we're gonna go to the shorter edges. And we're gonna fold those up, same thing, to meet that marked line. And then press. And then do the same thing on the other side, press. So now you should have a little tab like this. And then just to prepare it for the next step, you can fold the whole thing in half so that the last two folded in tabs are on the left and the right. And then fold the whole thing in half like that. And just add a clip. There you go. So you have one tab ready to go. Repeat that with the other tab. All right, once you have your zipper tabs pressed, what you're gonna do is take one end of your zipper tape, take a zipper tab and open it up. And then remember the left and the right sides have these little flaps. You're gonna just slide your zipper in between those flaps so they kind of hug around it. And then fold it in half. And just try to get the edge of your zipper tape right into the middle of your zipper tab. Just like that. So try to get it even so that everything is lined up, covered up, kind of tuck in those little corners and use clips to help really hold it in place. There we go. All right, so do the same thing on the other end. Okay, now I'm just gonna sew a little box to hold this in place. So I'm just gonna sew an eighth of an inch seam allowance along all four edges of these little zipper tabs just to hold it all down. Once you have the zipper tabs on there, let's find the midpoint of our zipper tape. So I'm just gonna fold the whole thing in half, lining up the ends, and then just pinching. I'm gonna make a teeny tiny clip with my scissors right along the edge of the zipper tape. 
gonna do this for both sides of the zipper tape. We want the midpoints here. So once you're done with the zipper tape, put that out of the way and then grab your zipper panels. And on the wrong side of your zipper panels, on the short edges, mark in three quarters of an inch in from each short edge. Once you have those marked, you're just gonna fold the short raw edge wrong sides together back to meet that marked line and then just very carefully press to hold it back. So you're gonna do this for each short edge of each of your four zipper panels. Okay, now that you have that done, let's find the midpoint. I know, a lot of midpoints. Let's find the midpoint on the long edges of each one of your zipper panels. Just having these midpoints is gonna help all the future steps. I know it's a little bit of extra work, but you'll be glad you did it. Now, if you have two exterior and two lining pieces, you're gonna have to make sure you pay attention to which one you're applying. Um, I'll label them, but just so you guys know, mine are all the same, obviously. So take your zipper and lay it right side up. Take your exterior zipper panel and lay it right side down, matching up the midpoint marks and just clip together along the long edge. Now your zipper panel is not gonna be as long as your zipper tape, it's not supposed to be. So you should have zipper tape overhanging on both sides. You can even pull the zipper pull all the way out of the way. So now I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and baste along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once you have that basted on, flip your zipper over and then grab one of your lining zipper panels and lay that right sides down to the back side of your zipper. And then once again, line up the midpoint marks. And then the big thing here is you wanna make sure it lines up perfectly with that exterior piece that's on this other side on the same edge as your zipper tape. So now I'm gonna sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have them sewn on, then you're going to press them with an iron or with your fingers. You're gonna press the two panels wrong sides together. I like to just kind of pull on them and then line up the edges and clip the edges together. And then I'm gonna clip the midpoint marks together. Again, having all these midpoint marks is helpful. And you can press this with your iron if you'd like. You can finger press it. And once you've got it pressed the way you want it, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch along the edge close to the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And then you're going to do the same thing on the short edges and then also along the raw edge. So you're just making a nice big box around this whole thing to get it nice and flat. There we go, we've got one zipper panel ready to go. We're just gonna repeat that with the other side, but I will walk you through it again. So once again, lay your zipper right side up and take your exterior zipper panel and lay it right side down. Match up those midpoint marks and clip along the edge. And now I'm just going to baste at an eighth of an inch seam allowance right along this clipped edge. Once that's basted on, I'm gonna flip it over and look at the wrong side of the zipper tape. And then I'm gonna take my lining zipper panel and lay that right side down on the back of the zipper tape, match up the midpoint marks, clip in place, and just check to make sure it, for the most part, matches up with the left and right sides of the panel on the other side of the zipper tape, but on the same edge right here. All right, now let's sew along this edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And now we're just going to fold them wrong sides together. So I'm gonna finger press it really well on one side, do the same thing on the other side, and then just match up all the raw edges and the short edges that are folded in over here. I'm gonna match those up too. All right, now on this unsewn side over here, we're gonna just top stitch at an eighth of an inch seam allowance all the way around, closing up the raw edges and the sides as well. Alrighty, your zipper panel is all ready to go. Let's install it on our bag. So grab your lining, and your lining should be wrong side out, right side in. And you should have your midpoint marks on the top straight edges. If you don't, go ahead and mark those midpoint marks. Now you can kind of decide how you want your bag to be. I'm gonna have the zipper going against the back panel in the end, so looking straight at it, this is how it's gonna be. So I'm gonna take my zipper panel and I'm gonna take my zipper panel and lay it right side up. And I'm just gonna kind of place it in my bag. So it's right side up. And then here's the right side of the back panel. I'm gonna match up those midpoint marks just like that. And clip those together. I'm gonna go all the way along the edge. 
it should get close to the seam, just like the flap, but it should not go into the seam. Just make sure you're keeping the other lining panel out of the way. All right, so I've got the zipper panel clipped to the back panel right now. My zipper, when closed, is going towards the left, which is how I want it. And now I'm gonna base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once that side is basted in place, let's flip it around and baste the other side in place as well. First, matching up the midpoints, clipping those together, and then just clipping along the entire straight edge. All right, once you have that clip, we're gonna base this on at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Just make sure you're not getting these edges in there. So move anything that doesn't need to be in the seam, make sure you move it out of the way. All right, you can open up that zipper all the way. Now, make sure your pocket zipper is more than halfway open if you're turning it out through the pocket like I am, okay? You don't, make sure that's not closed. It needs to be more than halfway open. Make sure your lining is right side in, wrong side out, and your exterior is right side out just like that, and we're gonna insert the exterior into the lining. Now, I know I want the zipper on the back, so I'm gonna make sure my flap is up against the zipper pocket, okay? Just like this. That's also gonna make turning the bag out later easier. I'm just gonna smush it in there. Since I changed the seam allowance of my lining, my lining is a smaller space than my exterior, so I really have to smush it in there. So once you got it in, your zipper needs to be pushed down. Your zipper tab needs to be pushed down. I did sew my zipper tabs into these seams by accident last time. So zipper tabs push down, zipper panels push down, and then also your rectangle ring or D-ring push down. Everything needs to be pushed down. You only wanna be sewing the seams here. Now I'm going to press my exterior seam open because that's gonna be easier for me. And we're gonna line up the seams where the gussets are first. So over here on the sides. I'm pressing open my exterior and lining that up. And it's gonna give you a little bit of a fight if your zipper is the suggested length. If your zipper's a little bit longer, this is gonna be easier. If your zipper is the length they suggest, it's gonna be a little tricky. So let's go to the other side here. Once again, I'm pushing my zipper tab down. I'm pushing my rectangle ring down, zipper panels down. I'm gonna press open the seam allowance on my exterior and then match it up with the gusset seam on the lining. And then I'm gonna clip the middle of the gusset as well. And now I'm gonna go find the midpoint marks on the top edges of my lining and exterior and match those up and then just gently go around and clip the lining and the exterior together. And this gets bulky, I mean, especially where that flap is, this, is, this gets pretty thick. So just take your time, take a break if you need to. Got the back panel done, now I'm gonna do the same thing for the front. First I match up the midpoints, and then I do the rest of it. All right, once you have it all clipped, now we're gonna sew around this top edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm actually gonna take the table off of my sewing machine to make it easier for me to kind of wrap this around that bar and then just sew around it. If you can't do that, just sew from the inside of the bag. So sew along the inside at 3 8 inch. Make sure nothing gets in those seams, especially over here on the side. Keep the tabs out, keep the zipper out, keep the metal out, and just go very slow. If it's very thick up here, go two rounds of stitching just to make sure it all stays together. Okay, so while going around, I had a couple of hiccups that I think are really good things to talk about. First, as I was sewing over here, I realized that this had folded up and I was starting to sew over this pocket, which is definitely not good because I have to turn it all out through here. Luckily, it was just the edge of the seam, so I was able to cut it off, 
But once I noticed that was happening, I stopped, I backstitched and I took it out and I fixed it. So you don't have to keep going. You don't have to unpick everything. Just stop, fix the problem and then continue. The other thing I did was at some point I changed my seam allowance. I had been going around at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then at some point I switched it to a half of an inch seam allowance. I knew I wanted to do two rows of stitching anyways around the top. So I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna do the whole thing at half of an inch. So I just want you to see that, like it's okay if, if things don't go perfect, you can change it a little bit. An eighth of an inch seam allowance isn't going, especially at this point, isn't going to make that big of a difference. So I'm going to just reburn these edges since they're shedding all over the place. Now we gotta turn the whole bag out through this hole. So I'm going to open the zipper all the way here and very gently, I'm gonna pull everything out through the zipper. I'm gonna start with the flap and then just smush the whole thing out of here. I'm still not done with the flap yet, but almost. That's a cute bag. I like that bag, that's sweet. Okay, so now we need to top stitch around the top, which is a little tricky. So I like to leave the hole in the lining until I'm completely done top stitching. So that way I can push my fingers in here and kind of push down the edges. Now, I messed this up on the first bag and had to redo it. So let's make sure we get it right. The edges over here by the gusset, you're just gonna fold down the seam just like we've been doing. Just fold it down, tuck in the lining and clip. So I'm gonna do both of those gusset sides first. Okay, but now with the zipper panel, let's tuck in the lining. So with the zipper panel, you're not going to top stitch it like this. I mean, you can, but that's not the ideal look. You're actually going to take this whole zipper panel and fold it down just like that, which is why I used a lighter material on my zipper panels. Cause if my zipper panels were vinyl, this is gonna get really bulky when I fold this down. So just take your time and get this fold nice and straight. Now it's harder to get this flat on the back because you can't really clip anything with this back panel. So for this back panel over here, you're going to tuck down the zipper panel lining. You might wanna zip it up if it's easier for you. No, it's not gonna be easier for you. But you wanna tuck this down and your handle needs to be up and the flap needs to be up. So handle and flap are up. If you wanna get an iron free material, you can. And you wanna flatten this down back here. There we go. And you wanna flatten this down over here. So now when we top stitch this, we're gonna just have to be feeling a lot. So when I top stitch this one, I am gonna remove the table this time and I'm going to wrap it around the bar. I'm gonna actually start with the back panel because I think that's the hardest panel. And when I'm doing the back panel, I'm gonna keep the flap to the right, the strap to the right, the back panel smoothed down. And as I'm going, I'm just gonna be checking that the zipper panel is folded down. We don't want the zipper panel to come up while we're top stitching. The zipper panel needs to be folded down against the lining. And then we're just gonna go around the entire top edge Top stitching anywhere between an eighth to a quarter inch seam allowance. Either one of those will be fine. done. I would say if you made the zipper a little bit longer, it would make that step a lot easier because the zipper is shorter. You have a hard time with these edges. So I think a longer zipper would make the top stitching a little bit easier. I decided to go with a quarter inch seam allowance for top stitching, which I think looks really nice. So now let's close up the hole in the lining. So wherever you left the hole, pull it out and just fold the raw edges in to the hole. We've got some shedding, go ahead and trim it down. So I'm just gonna, I just kind of pull on the corners where the seams are and it all just folds in on itself. 
And then I clip that there. I'm just gonna clip along the whole edge, just once again, making sure all raw edges are tucked inside. And then before I'm done, I'm gonna grab my little sew-in label. And then I'm gonna take the open end of the sew-in label and tuck that into the little folded opening here. And I'm just gonna push it down so that I, I still see the text, but it's down in that seam. And now I'm just gonna top stitch along this clipped edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. All right, there you go, tuck in your lining. Okay, so now we have to do the magnetic snaps and the strap. So I'm just going to fold this down and I'm gonna mark where we suggested putting the magnetic snaps and we're gonna see if that still works. All right, so I have my midpoint marked on my flap. This is on the lining side of my flap. And then I measured three and one eighths inch to the side and then three quarters of an inch up from both sides of the midpoint mark. And what I wanna see is if this is the right placement for the snaps I already have. So if I just kinda of use my thumbs where those are, I mean, that looks pretty good. I think that'll work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use those marks as placement because those are the marks we suggested whenever I said if you're using the prongs to place it there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my hole punch and I'm punching through the lining in the exterior. Like I said, my magnetic snaps have rivets on the back. It's okay if they are seen in the end. I'm just hoping that, hoping that placement for this is right. And so the male part is gonna go on the lining side and the snap goes on the exterior side. All right, I haven't, I haven't set them yet. I mean, there's nothing I can do if it's not good, but yeah, no, that's perfect. That's good placement. I like it. That's good placement. That's good. And that gives it enough room too for it to kind of expand and still hold it shut. That's good. All right, I'm happy with that choice. <laughs> so those are, those are decent measurements. So let's grab the rivet press and we're gonna grab the top die, which looks like a rivet die, but it's not the same size as your rivet die most likely. And then we're gonna grab the bottom die that's gonna look like the female end. So you just flip this upside down so that the male end goes against the female end and then press down. Alrighty, the bag is done. Now we just gotta do the strap. And like I said, with the strap I'm making, it's not going to be removable. So I have a 60 inch long cut of my webbing and right off the bat, melt down those edges so that they don't fray too much. And then the only additional hardware I need is my slider. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the strap end to my slider. So I'm gonna take one of my strap ends and go up and over that slider. And then I'm gonna fold my strap end in about a half of an inch and then fold the whole thing down just like that. Now you can take this to the sewing machine and sew a little rectangle with an X through it to hold it in place, or you can use rivets, which you know I'm gonna use rivets. All right, so let's clip it to hold it. And when punching the holes for your rivets, you just wanna make sure that you're not punching the hole right on the raw edge of the webbing. You want it to be more towards the center. So if you have to kind of Refold it, maybe fold it some more, that's fine. All right, so I'm just gonna punch two holes that are about a half of an inch apart. So after I punch one hole, I like to right away put a rivet in it so that if it twists around or moves, I don't have to worry that those holes won't match up. Then I'll punch the next hole. All right, there we go. So that's good, I'll set all of it together in just a moment. So now I'm gonna take my bag and I'm gonna take the end with the slider and I'm going to have it so that the folded edge is facing up, up and away from the bag, okay? Keep your strap nice and straight. I know this gets a little tricky. Just keep it nice and straight all the way down. And I'm gonna have it go, ooh, come back strap. And I'm gonna have it go down from the top into the rectangle ring on the right side and I'm gonna pull it up just like this, okay? Keep it all nice and straight. And then as I pull it up, I'm gonna pull it through the right side of my slider, and this is the side that has the fold over. It's gonna go up there, and then down to the left side, just like that, okay? So now when you see this, it's looped around the right rectangle ring. If you look at the top of the strap, it's nice and clean. The fold over part is on the bottom. 
and then we have this end over here and this is just going to go right through the left rectangle ring I'm going to fold it in on itself about a half to three quarters of an inch and then wrap it around there you go and then I'm just going to add some clips to clip this in place and then you can sew a little box with an X to hold this fold over in place or you can use rivets so once again I'm just going to use rivets just like I did on the other side by the slider all right so you can see I have my snaps in there they're a little little close together but that's okay now all we have to do is set them so make sure you put the right die in here make sure you set the ones up here by the slider as well don't forget about them oh yeah that looks so cool doesn't this bag look so cool I love it I am so stinking happy with how this bag turned out and I love the vinyl we used I love how that vinyl came out I love how easy it was to work with it was perfect for the flap I love wax canvas especially for curves I almost feel like I'm cheating honestly I feel like I'm like bag making cheating because wax canvas is just so much easier to use on these sharp curves and you can mess up and nobody can tell I mean I just I love wax canvas on curves and I also love that we put the vinyl pocket on the back as well I mean look at this webbing you guys this bag just kills me I love it we got the magnetic snaps again our little poochy pouches pockets right here little poochy pockets on the top here we go I actually love that we use the waterproof canvas for the zipper as well I mean it's very very monochromatic you know it's very simple where it's like solid solid BAM fun print if you have a gamer in your life they're gonna love this bag so thank you so much for sewing with me today I hope you had fun if you make this bag you gotta let me know if you post it on social media you gotta tag me I'm at Oak Roots I want to see your uni messenger bag if you're not on social media but you want to send me a picture I'm Jessica at oakleroots.com email me your picture I can't wait to see it let me know if you make it let me know who you're making it for let me know what you're using it for I'm so ex I'm so excited about this bag finally we did a messenger bag so thank you so much for watching I hope you're having a great day have a fantastic rest of your week get out there and make something bye guys